Did the Dallas Mavericks get better this offseason? That may seem like a crazy question to some of y'all, but this is a real conversation I saw on Twitter over the last couple of days, and I want to give my two cents. And I think this all stemmed from this clip from the Pick Aside podcast. Dallas also got better this year, so I don't give a f how many Did games they get okay better. Did they? Why, why did they? They don't have perimeter defense. But they got better at shooting, right? Why did they, they lose the finals, Drew? Why? They, why? Because they, 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 no, they, they couldn't hit what? They couldn't hit what? They couldn't hit what? They couldn't hit what? What percentage did P.J. Washington shoot? Okay. Derek Jones what did he shoot? What did he shoot in the Western Conference My point, finals. they couldn't and they still, but Luka just dominated them, hey, right? What, what did Clay shoot in that playing game? What playing game? Yeah, <laughs> over. Oh, Ten. Clay was asking in one game series. <laughs> the the reason why, why we don't know basketball. The right reason now. why they lost the ball is sure. if they're not OKC is not drastically better this season. And so is Dallas. Drastically is a blatant lie. They were just a fucking fifth seed. And, uh, yo, bro, oh is Clay God. Thompson not a massive upgrade over Derrick Jones Jr.? He doesn't he's even know. Upgrade. He's, he's an an upgrade. a better shooter. He's for sure. Bro, I think it's a he's massive a better upgrade. Player. Defensively, defensively, Derrick Jones is not close. Yeah, but not Andrew Marshall. Clay Thompson's a bad defender. I'm gonna tell you. This is gonna show me exactly the I watch. Clay Thompson's a bad. Defender? He's still a good better defender. defender. He By is. how much? He was their best perimeter defender he's last year. Ball. If Clay hey. Thompson is your best perimeter defender, he's a you're better three point shooter. Ball. Yes, By a lot. far. By a lot. And he's still By a good lot. defender. That is a f upgrade. Now, I just picked different portions of the, the heated debate that was uh, relevant to this video. I'll put the link in the description if you want to check out the entire thing. Now, in order for us to determine if they did have a good offseason, they did get better, we got to look at what this offseason looked like, fellas. So the first one, players out that were important, Josh Green, Tim Hardaway Jr., Derrick Jones Jr. And when I say important, I just mean rotational players. Uh, no disrespect to Greg Brown III. And then the players coming in that are important, Spencer Dinwiddie, Quentin Grimes, Najee Marshall, and of course, Clay. Thompson. Now, this season was such an interesting one for the Dallas Mavericks. Of course, they made it all the way to the NBA Finals and lost to the better team, Boston Celtics. But going into the All-Star break, they had a record of 32-23, and 23, which is decent. That's really good. But decent slash really good in the Western Conference means you, you're a playing team. Now, for the last 20 games of the season, they were 16-4. and four. What happened? What changed? How did they go from a decent team where we're a couple games above 500 to being virtually unstoppable. And actually, uh, one of the four losses that they got at the end of the season was because they had already secured their spot in the playoffs and nobody played. So they were really like 16-3 and three over the last 19 games that mattered. That is an insane turnaround. And that turnaround transitioned its way to the playoffs, and that helped them get all the way to the NBA Finals. Now, you could give a lot of different credit to a lot of different things. Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, continue to jail. But the thing I'm going to give the credit to because... I'm a stats-based guy in a lot of cases, is the defense, man. The defense were f was fine. It was cool at the first half of the season. We talk about them having a 32-23 and 23 record. They were like 16th of defense. That's fine. That's, that's casual. Now, the last 20 games, they had the second-best defense in all of basketball. For me, that is a recipe to win a bunch of games. And I feel like Luka Doncic, the, the great Luka Doncic teams that we've seen, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say we've seen two. We got the one that was in the conference finals against the Warriors, and then this one that made it to the NBA finals. I feel like they've been somewhat misunderstood in the way. Like, Luka Doncic is this offensive dynamo that he's he's basically unstoppable. It's not many people in basketball that are that are a better system. And now you got Kyrie Irving on the side, which is phenomenal as well. Them two teams that went in those deep runs, the one thing they have in common is the defense. The team, the 2021-2022 team that I'm referring to, they were sixth in defense. And I'm talking about the 20-game stretch. They were second defense. That defense stuff matters. And that's what they were. Now, last year, they weren't no slouch on offense either. They were top 10 in offense. In order to be a great team to make an NBA Finals, you kind of have to be really good at both of those things. And that was the recipe for them to get to the Finals. Now, we talk about them, their defense being the reason, one of the main reasons why they were able to not just uh, surge up to the five seed, but to carry over in the playoffs. We think about players leaving like Derrick Jones Jr., who was their point of attack defender. And I can see the argument of saying like, yo, they lost that. Their identity, defensively, may be over. Hold on. New Enjoy Basketball Drop is live right now. You've been seeing me rock this hat for the last week or so. I think it's stylish. It is on sale right now. We're calling this one our training camp uh, collection. Included is this dope t-shirt where it's very simple. Just let people know on the side that you enjoy basketball and that you made it to training camp, y'all. This is our highest quality shirt that we've made. We got the stitching. We got the... Man, stop messing around. The link is in the description. Go get some before it sells out. We always do a very limited drop to make sure that the quality is A1. Let's get back to the video. And I don't buy into it that much. Now, Derrick Jones Jr., do not get me wrong, he had a phenomenal season, like a career year, and that helped him get his bag in LA. But I think kind of lost in all of this is PJ Washington. He's still on the damn roster, y'all. 
P.J. Washington was an important defensive player as well. Games where he guarded Kevin Durant and the games where he guarded Shea Gilles Alexander entire quarters where that was his assignment and he did a really good job here. Now, of course, it was the tandem, right? You get Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, two athletic wings and then a rim running center. That's the That has been a recipe, at least what we've seen so far. But losing Derrick Jones Jr., I don't think it's, it's not ideal, obviously, but I don't think it's that bad where we need to be, I don't know, arguing on whether or not they got better. Yes, it's a loss. It's 100% a loss. It's hard to replicate what Derrick Jones Jr. did for them last season, especially considering he was a plus three-point shooter for the first time in his career. But when I watched the NBA Finals, the, the thing that stood out more than anything is that the, the Boston Celtics were like, hey, we're going to do our very best to neutralize Luka and to neutralize Kyrie Irving. One of those dudes is easier to neutralize. And if P.J. Washington want to take 12 three-pointers, so be it. If Derrick Jones Jr. want to take 23 pointers, so be it. We will live. P.J. Washington was great in that OKC series. Series after that, he ain't hit a shot. So we're okay with selling out of those defenders to really get to the engine of the offense. And uh, this offseason, they kind of fixed some of that. Did I remind you who Klay Thompson is, man? Now, I, I do want to say what I don't agree with Rhea Vaughn is I don't, I don't think Klay Thompson was a good defender last year. Full stop. I do not think he's a good defender. Um, at least last year. I, I saw the first preseason game. He was getting over those screens kind of nicely. Who knows? Maybe this new new scenery kind of changed things. But just looking at what he did last year, I was not impressed. I mean, a man sat out for so long, I couldn't expect his knees to be as good as they were pre-injury and all. But y'all know, or some of y'all know, every game that I watch, regular season, preseason is on, I'm not taking notes of preseason. Every regular season game that I watch, I take some form of notes. Now, sometimes the notes can be two sentences. Sometimes it can be a goddamn thesis paper if it's really that important to me. I watched, <laughs> I went back to my notes to see the game. Sacramento Kings, Golden State Warriors um, uh, playing a game. Now, I'm not I'm not basing my entire opinion about Klay Thompson on one game where he shot over for 10. That is not who Klay Thompson is, especially because you look at his, his numbers after the All-Star break. He was a 42% three-point shooter on 19 and a half points per game. That's more, more like what he is than 0 for 10. But in my notes from that game, in bolded letters, it says, Klay Thompson has been abysmal defensively, first stint shouldn't play. This is a win-to-go-home situation. This is Clay Thompson who can hit seven threes in a game. My notes say that his defense was so bad that he shouldn't be playing. I'm now I'm gonna go see if okay. What did I see? What did I see? Man, I love being in 2024 where I want to watch a random basketball. I mean, this is not random, but I could just find the game and watch it. So okay, I'm gonna just see some of the find some of the clips I may have seen, and I might have been wrong. Obviously, I'm, I'm not saying this is. A science here. It was just one sentence of notes, but I'm curious of what I was seeing there. It has to be more than this, but this is the first thing I saw, I guess. We're about four minutes into the game so far. Harrison Barnes goes against Draymond, and Klay Thompson just loses De'Aaron Fox, who's going to tip the uh, tip dunk it. Now, personally, I'm not the type to be yelling at an NBA player for missing some rotations because these, of course, are humans and everything. But here's another one where Steph Curry is like, I got ball. He's telling Klay Thompson, go, uh, go get corner. You're going to see him blatantly point, go get corner, Klay, go get corner. And Klay Thompson may not have seen him or may have not have seen Keegan Murray, but him trying to pick up Keon Ellis leads to another Keegan Murray three. And Keegan Murray, if y'all remember this game, um, he was really good this game. Do I want to watch this entire game or do I want to trust my notes? I don't know. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not basing my opinion on just this one game, right? As a whole, the Warriors that I watched last season, Klay Thompson was not a positive defender. And I think, again, part of that is because he's lost his step with his, with his injuries and everything. Now, I think he could do a pretty good job of guarding bigger threes and, and some fours because they don't require him to move laterally as much. And I also look at Jason Kidd as defensive-minded coach that I'm sure they're going to experiment quite a bit on like what type of player Klay Thompson is going to defend. And I would not be surprised if we get a couple weeks into the season and he's not being asked to be the primary defender like some people expect him to be because, again, P.J. Washington has played this role. Now, I'm telling you that Klay Thompson place up defensively so you're like oh if pj is guarding this primary ball handler who's gonna guard the guy who pj should be guarding that could be the clay thompson role defensively defensive of course this team thing and, and jason kidd has come out and been very candid about his star players luka dons and carrie irvin needed to defend we watched carrie irvin in the postseason getting that chair when he needed to we also saw uh luka dons just do it quite a bit specifically when they tried to get him on the block now of course they're going to be teams that are going to hound luka because if he's tired the offense is tired. Regardless, defense is going to be a team thing, and losing one defender shouldn't tank the defense as much, especially because you're adding an offensive shooter that is one of the greatest of all time. Reminder, second half of the season, 42% from three, 19 and a half points per game. 
Luka Doncic is going to generate so many looks for Klay Thompson that even though he's not a plus defender anymore, I still look at him as a plus acquisition. Because I, again, I look at that finals and I'm like, bro, they they need more shooting. Now they need a lot. That Boston Celtics team is the best team in basketball. Like I, even if they had Klay Thompson last year, I don't think they win that series. But they needed more people that you can trust that other teams have to trust. Because Klay Thompson, he got a lot of open looks as a warrior, but that was by virtue of them having a great offensive system and him also having Steph Curry on this team. He's one of those deny-deny shooters even now after all of these injuries. They have not had another player like that with the, with Luka Doncic other than, of course, I guess Kyrie Irving, but even Kyrie Irving is not to the same level as Klay Thompson as the catch-and-shoot player. But I also think this is them putting trust in their back line, the Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively. And I genuinely do believe that Derek Lively's progression is one of the most important like stories of the entire NBA, specifically for the Dallas Mavericks, because if he continues to progress, and again, last season, he looked great as a rookie on both sides of the floor. Didn't, didn't even really make sense when you think about who he was in college and everything, but I know highly touted high school prospect, yada, yada, yada. If he continues that, because I thought he was getting better and better throughout the season, if he used this offseason and continues to do that, there's a world where this team is still a good defensive team off the backs of their back line. Now, it's probably asking a lot for a year two player. Not probably. It is asking a lot for a year two player, but this is one of those teams where their window is, is now. And I think he can take that pressure and turn it into, into diamonds, take the, whatever the saying goes. I don't know. Now, that's just one acquisition of the offseason. They also, again, did bring in Najee Marshall, who was a really good get. 19 minutes per game last season, 46% from the field. Um, and then from three, it was 30, you see, I need my glasses, 38% from three. Now, that is the only time in his NBA career where he's been a positive three-point shooter. So they're hoping that that doesn't regress back to the means and that that's actually who he is as a player. And then you get like Quentin Grimes, who throughout the first two years of his career, he was a 38% three-point shooter. And last year, I don't know what happened. He ended up shooting 14% from three when he was in Charlotte. That don't even sound like a real number, but they're hoping that he can replace the minutes of Josh Green, which I'm a, they're like on a similar tier of player, I, I guess. And then they brought back Spencer Dinwiddie. And I don't know what it is about Dallas Rams, but Spencer Dinwiddie shoots 40% from three when he plays for Dallas. Every other team he played for, he's a 33% three-point shooter. It's Dallas specifically. Two years of 40%. Don't even make sense. So I think that they did sacrifice some of that defense for the higher ceiling of an offensive team. And again, this was already a team that could on any night be an offensive juggernaut. And now they add one of the greatest shooters of all time, albeit past his prime, but still a legendary shooter. So did the Dallas Mavericks get better? I'm going to say yes. How much so? It's going to be hard to really tell because I do believe other teams around them got better as well. So it might not show up in the overall standings. It might not show up here or there, but I firmly do believe that they did become a better team this offseason.